Hello and welcome back to the guillotine 18th century chemist theater. Today we are going to build off the Lewis structure, which was great as a two-dimensional model, but we really want to inflate this to the three-dimensional real world. Uh, for many reasons, uh, one of which is that if we want to really talk about how molecules interact with each other, then we're going to have to know not only the type of bonds that they have, which we talked about earlier, but the actual 3D shape. Um, and those two will come together to determine whether or not the molecule is what's called polar or nonpolar. And then depending on that, that'll determine the intermolecular forces available. So 3D shape is, is really important. Um, now, this gets a lot more complex than this. Uh, obviously, I'm, I am painting in broad strokes here, but it's enough to get you started. And I'll tell you where uh, you can dig a little deeper if you want to. But again, the importance of geometry cannot be um, overstated in, in chemistry. And, and the cool thing is a lot of this will tie into what you already have seen in uh, the news, media, commercials, etc. whenever they show uh, molecules, especially organic molecules. You'll have enough rules after today to try to figure out how a lot of those are actually made in terms of the geometry and the bond angles. So the basic idea is that once you have a Lewis dot structure, um, although we flatten them out and make all the bond angles 90 degrees apart, in the real world, um, they're going to try to get as far away from each other as possible, and they're going to use the entire uh, space, uh, three-dimensional space, uh, almost like a globe. You know, if you wanted to get away from each, someone else on the globe, you know, you'd go on the other side of the world. Um, and if you took one step farther, you'd be getting closer to them. And that's the same thing that these do, depending on whether it's uh, two people trying to get away from each other, three or four. And that's as far as we'll go. We'll go to what's called four clouds. Now, you can go beyond four clouds. It's called an extended octet. And the rules are out there. Um, maybe someday I'll, I'll go in and talk about those. But, you know, I found, again, as a first-year chemistry student, um, you could probably get away without looking at those right off the bat. And so what's an electron cloud? An electron cloud is any type of bonding system, whether it's a single bond, double bond, or triple bond. All of those count as a single cloud, and that's really important. That's really the only sticking point of this, is that no matter how many electrons are involved in a bond between two atoms, um, they only count as one cloud, um, because that system uh, is, is dealing with sort of a hybridization of S and P orbitals. And depending on how many uh, electrons are involved, you're going to see either what are called like sp or sp2 or sp3. Um, but what you also do in a double or triple bond is that you'll get um, some of the other uh, 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 p-shaped orbitals involved in the bonding. Now again, that's way beyond where we need to go here, but uh, it's a little backstory to understand why it only counts as a single cloud because it's 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 not going to affect the geometry any differently. So, no matter what type of bond, single, double, or triple you have, um, it counts as one cloud, and then any unshared pairs also count as a single cloud, because they're going to be taking up space, too. Now, we do this one atom at a time, um, and, and you really only have to worry about the geometry of, of what I call non-terminal atoms, which means atoms that aren't at the end of the line. An atom at the end of the line really doesn't affect the geometry. Um, only atoms that have uh, two or more atoms coming off of them. Um, are going to affect the geometry because we really don't see the electron clouds themselves. We see the atoms. And so we determine the geometry of the bonds. And so if you only have two clouds, um, whether that's because it's a single bond or a, a single bond, triple bond, or a double, double bond, um, that's going to be what's called a linear structure. And I'll show you what that looks like down below. If you have three clouds, uh, again, due to maybe three single bonds um, with one of the exceptions, or maybe a single bond single bond and a double bond. Um, that's going to be called trigonal planar, which is in a plane getting as far away from each other as possible, which I will leave to the mathematicians above you, among you, to be 120%. When you really start to see a 3D structure, uh, that's called the tetrahedral, and that's when you're trying to get 109.5 uh, degrees away from each other in a three-dimensional shape. And so let me show you what this sort of looks like in terms of ball and stick models. <laughs> Obviously, linear looks like uh, three balls in a line there, so that's pretty straightforward no matter how you look at it. So imagine a stick and then the three balls sort of embedded on there. Trigonal planar from above is going to have a distinct shape, 120 degree bond angle. But if you drop it down on its side, it's all going to be flat because that's called a trigonal planar. All right? um, and all three of those are bonding centers to other atoms, and that's what gives its, its unique shape. Sort of like a, I think an old Nerf uh, boomerang used to be shaped like that. And then finally, the tetrahedral. Um, um, imagine uh, like sort of like a pyramid with an antenna sticking out of the top of it. Uh, you've got three points hitting the ground and one point sticking straight up. For the ninja fan above you, among you, uh, that is that is called a caltrop. 
because uh, if those were all pointed sides and you throw them on the ground, there'd always be one point uh, sticking straight up. These aren't technically jacks. I think jacks have a, a different stair shape. Um, but if you continue on in uh, Vesper, you'll you'll see that shape later with uh, six clouds. <laughs> now, the, now the problem is that not all of these are going to be necessarily bonding pairs. Some of these might be unshared pairs. And if you have an unshared pair there instead of one of those balls, then it's going to look a little differently. And so we need to talk about that kind of geometry. So determine the actual geometry by looking at the number of bonding versus non-bonding. And so unshared pairs uh, you don't really see because we're only really looking at the atoms. Uh, they still take up space though, sort of like the invisible man. Um, and then they will affect the bond angles appropriately. Uh, they, in fact, they actually spread out a little bit and compress the surrounding bonds just a little bit. So if something was originally 120 degrees, you would put less than 120 degrees. Or if something was a tetrahedral, instead of being 109.5, it would be less than 109.5. All right. Um, the honking reference I'll, I'll link down to. That's a, that's a reference to the famous goose story. But I'll save that for the geese fans among you. And so really, if we're limiting ourselves to four clouds, there's only certain scenarios that you can have. You could have a linear situation where you have two clouds both involved with some kind of bonding and no unshared pairs on that central atom. Now again, what's happening to the left atom or the right atom? I don't know. Um, you know, they, they could be involved in other bonds theoretically. And so we look at it one atom at a time. But an example of this would be carbon dioxide. Um, that, that carbon in the middle when, you did, when we did the Lewis dot for carbon dioxide, that's a double bond off the carbon on each side. And so we'll show you pictures of this later. Maybe I'll throw up another lesson that shows you some of the actual drawings of these. But just to understand the shape, this is fine. So trigonal planar, you've got three bonding clouds, um, all, all of which are involved in bonds. None, no unshared pairs off that central atom, so it retains its trigonal planar shape. Um, uh, and and, and the, the example we did last time in Lewis Dot uh, of formaldehyde would be an example of a trigonal planar and the, the hydrogens would all and the oxygen would get 120 degrees apart. So it's pretty simple if we're only dealing with two or three clouds uh, the geometry to turn it 3D is just a matter of rearranging the Lewis dot to spread them out to the appropriate angles so pretty straightforward. Now if you had if you had three clouds but only two of them were bonding it wouldn't really look like a trigonal planar anymore it would look more like a boomerang but we don't call it a boomerang we call it a bent. If you wanted to call it a trigonal bent, that's fine, because there is actually going to be a tetrahedral bent coming. Um, but an example, this would be ozone. Uh, and ozone was one of the ones we did in the uh, advanced lessons. Uh, you had um, on the central ozone, you had a double bond, a single bond, and an unshared pair. That gives you three clouds, so you're going to get a bond angle of slightly less than 120 here. Again, that doesn't look anything like a trigonal planar anymore, so we don't call it that. If you have four clouds, then you have a classic tetrahedral structure if they're all bonding. Those are going to be 109.5 degrees apart. And uh, methane is the absolute classic example of this. So CH4 is going to puff up to that sort of uh, caltrop-like shape. Um, and that's going to give you the geometry where all of them are 109.5 degrees apart. But if you're missing one of those, uh, then it's not going to look like a tetrahedral anymore. It's going to look like something called a trigonal pyramidal. It's going to look like a little pyramid or like one of those little happy massagers you might get at Bed and Bath and Beyond for your neck. Um, you're not going to see that unshared pair on the top, but it's still going to affect the geometry. So this would end up being a little less than 109.5. Um, and uh, this would be something like ammonia, NH3, because that nitrogen would have three bonding pairs, one to each of the hydrogen, um, and then one unshared pair coming off the top of it giving it four clouds but only three bonding. And then finally, an example of, a, of, a, of another bent structure, although some people call this tetrahedral bent, but you could get away with just calling it bent, is when you have four clouds but only um, two of them are bonding and you've got two unshared pairs. Now water is, is an example of this, and we're going to talk about the importance of water's bent structure a little later with intermolecular forces. But another example would be something like H2S hydrogen sulfide. Um, would also form that kind of structure. And so for the first beginning chemistry student, the, those six shapes, uh, you really should memorize the names and the geometries and all that, uh, the bond angles. And with that, there's a surprising amount of work you can do. Again, if you want to keep going, uh, five clouds, six clouds, that information's out there. It's really not that far away. But, uh, but what I'll probably try to do is I'll, I'll, I'll throw up the, um, uh, the way I draw these things in uh, 3D for you. So that you get a nice idea of going beyond just these sort of uh, theoretical, bland, generic ball and stick models. But we'll leave that for another day.
So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate uh, your attention and uh, keep studying. Have a great day.